There's something about TV shows made for children that can really put the rest of the world on edge. The loudness, the obnoxious voices, sounds and music, the lousy CGI, the cheesy storylines. There's nothing about these shows that aren't completely vomit-inducing. The shows on this list exemplify the absolute worst of the worst. Welcome back to Film Shack. Today, we prepared for you the 10 worst TV shows for young children. Number 10. Uncle Grandpa <laughs> Although Uncle Grandpa is a cartoon, it isn't appropriate for very young kids. Body-related gross-out humor is the main offender, as issues like obesity, farting, including a tiger who passes a rainbow trail from his rear end that doubles as a weapon, and the removal and ingestion of one's own body parts are revisited ad nauseum. There's no semblance of reality to the meandering, fantasy-based plot, and supporting characters are often rude to each other. Despite Uncle Grandpa's craziness, he often proves himself helpful in a roundabout way. Violence is limited to physical exchanges with punching and kicking, as well as the occasional laser gun showdown or stray explosion. Uncle Grandpa falls in step behind the likes of Adventure Time with Finn and Jake, and Chowder, as another example of Cartoon Network's proclivity for bizarre, grotesque, and ultimately enticing cartoons. His moniker is a joke within itself, since he's the comical extension of the stereotypical crazy uncle, but his gags take the old pull-my-finger crack to new heights. This guy is like the Garbage Pail Kids version of Inspector Gadget. He can remove body parts, eat them himself, or feed them to his pet tiger, propel objects from his navel, and play basketball with his pliable belly. It's not exactly appetizing, and he's a little nuts, but that's the kind of wacky humor that, for better or worse, is sure to draw crowds. Number 9. Courage the Cowardly Dog <laughs> Stupid dog! By its very nature, Courage the Cowardly Dog is a show that isn't exactly meant for all kids. A surrealistic adventure series with horror and supernatural elements, Courage revolves around the life and struggles of the titular scaredy dog. The show isn't afraid of exposing kids to any kind of horror threat, including undead horsemen, demons, living puppets, and even a zombie version of Quentin Tarantino. Yes, really. It also doesn't shy away from blood and guts levels of violence, which make the series even scarier for younger viewers. But as you get older, and you're exposed to slasher movies and blood and guts on series like The Walking Dead, Courage starts to feel a little ridiculous, not only because of its weird blending of sitcom and horror, but also because of the dated animation style used in some of its experimental CGI scenes. Courage might have been a good show once, but time hasn't done this dog any favors. Number 8. Dora the Explorer When it comes to the claim that children's shows usually don't have a purpose, Dora the Explorer clearly defies that suggestion. The Edutainment series worked off a bilingual script, embracing Spanish-speaking audiences as well as increasing potential interest in the language among young children who were invited to participate with the challenging activities Dora faced on her adventures. Yet even though Dora did great things for language inclusivity and critical thinking, no amount of educational merit can make up for one simple fact. Almost all of the characters on the show are mind-numbingly annoying. Whether it's Dora's overly perky behavior, Swiper's pathetic whining, or Backpack's insufferable singing, Dora is full of characters that annoy, rather than characters you enjoy. Except for Boots the Monkey. He's still pretty cool. Number 7. Bob the Builder Behind me! Look! Mice! Lofty? There aren't any mice, see? Oh, mice! While shows like Dora the Explorer still had educational merit despite an abundance of annoying characters, a series like Bob the Builder can't lay claim to any similar distinction. Sure, maybe the call and response refrain of, can we fix it? Yes, we can. It's supposed to foster feelings of teamwork and getting along in the young kids who are viewing each episode. But we can all guarantee that everyone who watched the show was in it for the dump trucks not for the potential morale boosting. Between Bob's constant quasi-cheerleading attitude and the frequent arguments that erupt between conflicting personalities represented by trucks such as Scoop, Muck, and Lofty, 
the show presents a lot of moments that are easy to roll your eyes at. Yet nevertheless, the show has been rebooted as of 2015 and continues to air to this day, showing that kids will continue to tune in as long as it means dump trucks and dirt are involved. Number 6. Peppa Pig Ready? Ready! Run, Susie! Run! Oh, yes! <laughs> Kid shows about talking animals can be pretty great. PBS's Arthur has been a mainstay for 20 years now and continues producing quality episodes every year. Countless series about Mickey Mouse and Winnie the Pooh have been aired on Disney Channel and have entertained generation after generation of children. But when it comes to Peppa Pig, there's just no sugarcoating it. Peppa is what happens when the line between anthropomorphic and animal is horribly, eerily blurred. Sure, things like Arthur and the Mickey Mouse series muddy things a bit by giving humanized animals pets of their own, but Peppa confuses matters even more by having the human-like animals make the noises their animal counterparts make. The pigs snort frequently, the horses neigh, the dogs bark, and the cats meow, all while carrying on normal conversation. And even putting this trip to the animated Uncanny Valley aside, Peppa's kind of genuinely the worst all on her own. Number 5. Lazy Town I'm Stephanie. I like your costume. <laughs> I'm Siggy, and I like candy. I can feel that. <laughs> Taking risks in form and content is always a good way to break out from the mass mold and make a name for yourself in any field. In children's entertainment in particular, it's easy to confuse the plots of many similar stories say, any of the Disney princess films because of how exactly they follow the same kinds of narrative formula. It's an even bigger risk to radically change the way you present your story. However, and sometimes, experimentation can go a little too far. In the case of Lazy Town, ambitious medium mixing leaves viewers with a show that often veers into creepy territory. The series combined the live action of both puppets and CGI, painting a picture of a disjointed, loudly colorful world populated by characters ranging from irritatingly cheerful, Stephanie and Sportacus, to downright disturbing, Robbie Rotten, and literally every single puppet. You have to give the show credit for trying many new things, but at the end of the day, Lazy Town is a place most kids would be better off avoiding. Number 4. As Told by Ginger There are a hundred reasons why girls your age shouldn't wear makeup. What I really mean to say is you girls have your whole lives to grow up. Enjoy what you've got now. Enjoy being yourselves. Teenagers are an awkward group to understand, and that's even before you try and capture them in art. While most live-action teen dramas are criticized for not providing accurate representations for young viewers, animated efforts starring teenagers have similar, unenviable obstacles to overcome. As told by Ginger, clearly took a lot in its portrayal of a teenage girl's life, but in the process of trying to do something new, including being the rare example of an animated series with continuity and stakes. Ginger's good intentions get muddled and lost along the way. The primary narrative concern of the series is Ginger's, as well as her friend's, ability to navigate from the world of uncool nerds to the higher echelon of popularity. As a result of this particularly shallow pursuit, some of the series' episodes trend towards soap opera-esque topics that a show like Degrassi explored in spades, such as overwrought breakup plots, backstabbing friends, and addiction, none of which seem exactly well suited for the target audience. Number 3. Caillou Caillou, why don't you take Gerald today? So I get to feed him? And play with him? At first glance, there's nothing wrong with Caillou, the Canadian animated series about the adventures of an inquisitive toddler. He loves stuffed animals playing pretend, and his family, including his little sister Rosie. In many ways, he's a perfectly normal little boy, and since he's perfectly normal, he shows all emotions, including the whining typical of a toddler. Yet viewers, and parents in particular, have reported totally torturous experiences with the series, ones that become all the more understandable as the child viewers age into adolescence. According to the Canadian publication, The National Post, Caillou is, quite possibly, the world's most universally reviled children's program. Caillou has been credited with inspiring children to mimic his improper behavior, causing tantrums left and right. But maybe the real reason why children are acting this way stems from the fact that they are being made to watch the show at all. Its slice-of-life stories are generally quiet and not exactly engaging for the kids who are meant to watch. Number 2. 
The Amanda Show. After Nickelodeon had success with their kids' version of Saturday Night Live, All That, it was only natural for them to try out a spin-off, starring one of All That's standouts, Amanda Bynes. But while All That was a critical success, running for 10 seasons on Nick, with a wide-ranging and diverse cast, The Amanda Show failed to live up to its predecessor in every measure. The series added an unnecessary show-within-a-show component that only confused the format of the variety series into something sitcom-esque. Further, Amanda only ran for three years, before Bynes went on to pursue a short-lived career in movies. But perhaps the most important and damning of all, Amanda's much smaller and less diverse cast of regulars never gelled together in the way that All That's core performers did, except of course for Drake Bell and Josh Peck. And if the lasting legacy of the off-kilter The Amanda Show is that it made Drake and Josh possible, then maybe that's all it was really meant for. Number 1. The R Troopers Girls shouldn't be taking karate. They should be home playing with dolls. Oh, really? They say that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. But what does it say when a company tries to imitate its own work, only to do so poorly? The short-lived series VR Troopers, which ran from 1994 to 1996 in syndication, was one of Saban Entertainment's attempts at profiting off the incredible popularity of the Power Rangers franchise. Much like the Power Rangers, VR Troopers followed a group of unlikely teenage heroes in a sunny California town fighting a terrifying big bad the likes of which the world had never seen before. But unlike the Power Rangers, VR Troopers got bogged down in experimenting with virtual reality concepts, hence the VR and VR Troopers, that's simply laughable when viewed today. Plus, their suits just don't look anywhere near as cool. It's not a surprise, therefore, that it's the Rangers who have been rebooted time and time again and not the Troopers. We would like to invite you to share your opinion with us. Do you agree with our list? Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell. Thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye!